in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep bed. Jesus has said, I never forsake thee, promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Oh goodness, I can Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and guide. He is the light, in Him there's no darkness, ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding oh, yes. my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, sing His praises, Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above. Singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, praising his Savior. All the day long. Who's the way you want to go to? Huh? <laughs> what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path glows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning. Leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. We're leaning on his arms this morning. Amen. His everlasting arms. Amen. They last forever. And one day, we're going to be with him forever. Amen. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, as I walk close to Thee. Just a closer walk with Thee. Grant it, Jesus, this my plea. Daily let it ever be Just a closer walk with Thee Through this world of toils and snares If I 
talk to the Lord who cares. Where's it? Oh, with me my burden shares. Let me walk, let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, this my plea. Baby, let it ever be. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is over, time for me will be no more. Guide me to that peaceful shore. Let me walk. Let me walk close to thee, just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, this my plea, daily let it ever be, just a closer, closer walk with thee. Amen. Just a closer walk with thee. Amen. I'm going to say just to have a little talk to Jesus. Well, we done had that this morning, right? <laughs> had we done talked to him this morning, had we done let him know that we are instruments and he is the one that uses us each and every day. We're nothing without him. We can do nothing without him. Why? Because he's the Savior and we're not. Amen? We can't save nobody. We can't save nothing. We think we can, amen, at times. We think we can save ourselves. And, oh, Lord, I can make it through this life without Him. Lord, at each and every time He shows us, we can't do nothing without Him. We can't do nothing. So let us think of ourselves as instruments for Him. And each and every time before we do anything, say oh, yes. to yourself, are we instruments for Him? Are we doing the will of God? Or are we doing the will of ourselves? Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this precious, glorious day you give us. Thank you for the sunshine, Lord. Thank you for the rain you give us yesterday. Thank you for the knowledge of knowing what, how to take care of business. Because, Lord, each and every time we try to do something, Lord, we mess it up each time. But, Lord, if we put you first and ask your guidance and your will in our lives, Lord, everything comes out good, and we prosper each and every day. Lord, I ask a special blessing on this nursing home, Lord. I pray for all the workers, and I pray for all the residents, and I pray that the hand of God, your hand, Lord, will come down and touch it in a way that will be pleasing to you. And after it's all said and done, Lord, let us glorify you for the things that you have done. Lord, I pray that you will take control of the service, and I know you will if I get out of the way and let it happen, Lord. Let us get out, get our minds at ease and follow you and say, Lord, we're nothing but instruments. You are the one that does all. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Amen. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Consider Christ Jesus. Consider Jesus Christ in each and every thing you do. Amen. Each and every time we start to try to do something, let's back up and say, I, this morning, I, the rest of my life, will consider what Jesus Christ has to offer. And I want to follow Him. I want to talk to Him. I want to find out what His will is. And I want to know what he wants us to do. Amen. What he wants us to do. Not what I want to do this morning, but what he wants us will have us to do. Chapter 3, verse 1, Hebrews. We're forth, holy brothers, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him 
as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. Amen. He who has built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. One more time, let me read that. Amen. If I may. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things are God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. For Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end, therefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in provocation. In the day of temptation and wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with, it, with that generation, and said, They do err from in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not rest. They shall not enter into my rest. They shall not enter into my rest. Come on now. The whole time they were out in the desert, wandering from day to day, eating manna from heaven, griping and complaining, thinking they could do it better their way if they would have stayed in Egypt instead of coming out here in this barren land and having to eat nothing but bread day after day after day. They were thinking to themselves, if I'd have just only done it my way. It was bad where I was at. I was in prison. And I was having to work every day, but at least I didn't have to eat bread every day. I had some little other every once in a while. And every once in a while when I worked real hard, old Pharaoh would give me something. Amen. Give me something special, in other words. When I was doing it for myself, when I was looking out for myself, everything's good. Now let's get real here this morning. Don't we say that at time to time? And then, here comes the valley because God has stepped away from us. He is still there, but He's not. He's standing back and see. Okay, just go ahead and do it yourself. Go ahead and try to do it yourself. See how things work out for you when you try to do it yourself. Let us back up and let us read this one more time. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. There in the end, there at the start, there at the middle, we're going to have to use the things that God has provided for us in order to produce anything. Anything we try to make, the hand of God has given to us already. And it's up to us to make it good or make it bad. It's up to us to prosper in it or not. Amen. And verse 3 says, For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Remember Moses at the burning bush and God said, Go free my people. And Moses was the man, the hand of God. Now, did you get what I just said? Moses was the hand of God. God used Moses as an instrument in order to get something done. Moses couldn't do it himself. Each and every time when he would come to the roadblock, he didn't know whether to go to the left or to the right, he would sit flat down out in the desert and look up to the stars and say, God, what do I do next? Moses didn't do it. God did it. God did it.
through Moses. God can do it through you if we will only let him do it. If we will look at ourselves each and every day and say, self, you are nothing but dust. You were made by the hand of God from dust. That's something we walk on each and every day. Ain't it? That's something we look at each and every day and say it is under our feet. So let's put ourselves under His feet. Let us walk and let us talk and let us be, as I said 14 times already, an instrument for God. And I can't say it enough. If we will only use what God has provided in order to glorify Him, it all comes back to Everything that I have read in this book, each and every time when someone used what God has given them for the good in order to glorify God, everything come to pass and everything turned out awesome. The bottom line is the Israelites finally, finally listened to God and made it to the promised land. And Moses was able to stand up on that mountaintop and see it. Don't you know he was shouting from the top of his lungs about it. All y'all had to do was follow God. All you had to do was put yourselves behind and put God first and you made it to the promised land. Why 40 years of griping, complaining? Lord have mercy, all of us in this room have done it one time or the other. Had griping and complaining and we live in torment. We live in torment. We live in torment. Day after day after day. Nothing is happening in my life, we say. Well, let's look around and see why nothing is happening for the good in your life. God's not in it. That's the answer. Each and every time we take God out of the picture, we fall. Each and every time we take God out of the picture, we stay in one spot or that. Either stay in one spot or back it up. Amen? But each and every time we ask God to help us, to lead us from the heart, we go forth into the promised land. And we can stay there too. We can stay in the promised land if we follow in God. Amen. <laughs> well, this verse 4, it just keeps ringing in my mind. Every house is built by some man. Everything that God has put on the face of this earth, man has to use it Right? Because we can't make something out of nothing. But the one we serve today made something out of nothing. This very building we live in, a man built. This very building, the man that built this building had to use the things from God in order to make it happen. You see what I'm saying here this morning? We can't do anything without him and after the man has built the house let him glorify God in it let him lift up God in it everything that God gives you let it be let it be glory unto him let it be glory unto him praise God we sit back and we look at the things that we have made and sometimes we get all puffed up, don't we? Oh, what a beautiful chapel we have now. Oh, what a beautiful place we have to go worship God. Man built it, but God is over it. Without God, we wouldn't have a chapel. Without God, we wouldn't have nothing. Amen? So why don't we just back up and say, the only reason... We got this brand new chapel down here is because of God Almighty. Man, it have nothing to do with it. Amen. And one day we're going to be able to go down there. We're going to be able to worship God in there. But God's right here just like He is down there. Amen. 
It's not the building. The building is nothing but rubble. It can burn down right now. It can disintegrate before I. Yeah. And in time it will. In time it will. Just like these old bodies we have. They may they slowly disintegrate right before our eyes. And we're getting feeble. We're not able to do the things we used to do. But God made you of who you are. And He's not through with you yet. So let's use these feeble bodies to glorify Him. And each and every ounce of being you have in your body, each and every little bit of strength you have, glorify Him in it. And thank Him. If you can't raise your right hand, maybe you can raise your left. Amen. Glorify God. If you can't talk, at least you can hear. If you can't hear, at least you can talk. It's always something positive in your life that God has given you in order to glorify Him. Don't give up, people. Don't give up. God's not through with you yet. God wants you to be His child. God wants you to be someone that will stand for Him. Whether you're sitting in a wheelchair or walking down a hall, you can still stand for God. And you can tell other folks. You have to write it down on a piece of paper. If you can't even talk, you can still... There's a way to get this ministry. There's a way to get... God out in the streets where you're sitting at right now. You think you shut up, don't you? You think you shut away from the world. You think you have nobody. Oh, praise God, you have Him. You have Him. And all He is asking out of you here this morning is to say, He's my Savior. He built the house that you're living in right now. And when I say the house, I'm talking about this body that you live in right now. He's inside of you. He is pumping every heartbeat in your, on your heart right now. In your heart right, right now. He's giving life to your body for some reason. And the reason is to glorify Him. It's not for yourselves. This life that you're living now is to glorify God in it. This life you're living now is to make someone else have peace through the Holy Spirit. Let someone else see the glory of God in you and shine your light and don't put it under a bushel. Amen, as the Bible says. Let's get back to Moses now. He's standing there at that, bone, at that burning bush and God was telling him, I want to use you. I want you to go forth and free my people. I want you to go across that barren land and get them across over to the paradise. There's going to be obstacles in the way, but I'm going to be right there with you. And I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be right there with you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you. And I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be by your side. I'm going to be all around you the whole time. And Moses said, I can't do it myself. I can't do it myself, God. What am I going to do? So God made it a little bit easier for him. Made it, put, put a little bit of peace in his heart when he said, I'll put Aaron with you to be the spokesman for you. All you've got to do is tell Aaron what to say. Well, see, old Moses had a head cap. He stood it, right? He wasn't able to talk plain, in other words. But God was still going to use him no matter what. If Moses would get Moses out of the way and let it happen. Each and every one of you can be a Moses. Each and every one of you can live by faith and faith alone. Not faith in yourself, but faith in God. He's the only provider. He's the only one that can make it happen for you. And we can lift up Him each and every day and tell others about Jesus Christ and there won't be there won't be any wrath in your life. Amen? 
When the Bible speaks of wrath, it's talking about the Israelites out in the desert. And they turned their back on God. So when they turned their back on God, what happened? God brought a little wrath on them to get them back in line, in other words. Get them back walking straight. Get them back walking a straight and narrow way. Get them back into where they needed to be in their walk with God. And He will let it happen. If you will only let it happen, He'll make it happen in your life. But first and foremost, we have to use what God has given us. What has God given us this morning? The Holy Spirit. And we have to have hope until the end in order for that to happen. The first thing we have to do when we walk out as a Christian each and every morning is have faith in God and not ourselves. Have faith in God. It's that simple. It's, it's very simple, folks. Believe. Believe in what God did for you. He made it so easy for you to be saved. He made it so easy for you to walk with Him. He made it so easy for you. But we're the ones that make it hard. Right? How do we make it hard? Following ourselves instead of following God. Putting ourselves first instead of putting God first. And then we wind up in turmoil, pain, and all of the above. And we bring it on ourselves. God is always, Jesus Christ is always standing there with his hand out. Which way are you going to go next, he asked. Are you going to follow me? Or are you going to follow yourself? Are you going to follow the church? Or are you going to follow you? Follow him. And as I said earlier, we are the church. You are the church. Let no one tell you otherwise. The church, as we think of, the first thing, first thing that comes to our mind is a building made by human hands. Right? Let's get real here this morning. A church. What is a church? It's a building. Where we go? Glorify God. Right? That's what it's supposed to be. And the builders are not above. The builders are not above God. Mm. I'm going to read old, the old proverb just a minute. And I'm going to close it. Psalm, Psalm 35 is pretty much the same replica as uh, Hebrews 3 is. I'm going to read some of it this morning. Psalm 93. Oh. Verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all that's a big word there. All gods. For the Lord is great. In his hand are the deep places on the earth. The strength of the hills is also his. The sea is his. Why is the sea his? Because he made it. Amen. He made it. And his hands forms, form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand. Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. And as in the day of the temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work forty years long, was grieved with this generation, and said, It is people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Like we was singing a while ago. 
in his everlasting arms. In his everlasting arms. In his everlasting arms. That's all we have to think of, live, breathe, and eat this morning, is knowing that you are in his everlasting arms. And you don't have to worry about no wrath coming against you. You don't have to worry about no turmoil coming against you. You don't have to worry about nothing in this life overtaking you. Because God is with you and you are resting in His arms. Amen? And if we totally believe that every second of our life, just imagine where we would be. I want to tell you where we'd be. In paradise. Each and every day we would be in paradise. If we were resting on Him and being an instrument for Him. Resting on the everlasting arms. That tells me right there, them arms is forever. Them arms is, oh my God. Them arms is everlasting. We're the ones that, not, that are not everlasting. We're the ones that fall in and out of grace all the time, right? His grace is sufficient. His grace is always there. So who do we blame here this morning? We can't blame God. Because he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Didn't he say that? This Bible is truth. And I believe. And he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Can we make that promise to God this morning? Can we? Can we say, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. If we could, woo, we'd be right up there on the pedestal with Moses, wouldn't we? We'd be right up there on the pedestal with David. We'd be right up there with Paul. We'd be right up there with... Well, let's be that way this morning. Let's be a Paul. Let's be a Moses. Let's be somebody that will stand up for God no matter when you're chained up, sitting in a prison cell, and knowing and knowing that death is not far away. Let's stand up for God and truly believe in our hearts that we have everlasting arms to lean on. Someone that's going to be there no matter what. Oh, praise God. Praise God. By verse 8, Psalm 95 says, Harden not your hearts in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Harden not your heart. In other words, don't be grumbling. Don't be complaining. Don't be walking around saying, God, why are you doing this to me today? Oh, poor little old pedophile me. Look at the shape I'm in. God, why have you done this to me? Your heart becomes hardened. And then we won't bring up old Pharaoh, how he acted. Well, Lord, have mercy. When we harden our hearts, we're doing the same thing Pharaoh did. See, you see where he ended up, right? He ended up in turmoil. He ended up losing everything he had, including his kid. He lost everything because he kept hardening it, his heart. And here come the temptations that I think I'm just a little bit better than God, he said. And at times... At times, he thought he, he was God. At times, he thought he could do anything God could. But God showed him, didn't he? God showed him. Put no other gods before me. It's what God said. Put no other person on the face of this earth, no building, no nothing that comes into your life. Do not put it before Him. I want to tell you what. When I went down that hall a while ago and I opened that door up, that was the beautifulest place I ever... Beautiful. Is that a word? I won't say pretty. Then. That was a pretty place down there. It is. It's beautiful. I mean, the way they fixed it up, that is a beautiful place down there in that chapel. But it was built by human hands. we got to open the door and let God in there. We've got to open the door and praise His holy name in there and lift Him up before the beautiful. 
lift him up and thank God that he is come. Amen. That he is come to a place that was built by human hands. Mm. I stress heavily again, it's not where you worship God. It's how you worship God. And the how you worship God is believing and knowing that He is the one and only in your life. That He is the one and only in your life. Amen. Mm. Hebrews 5.15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us there, therefore come boldly unto the throne of God, and we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In time of need. You know, each and every time I get down and I feel like I'm alone, and I feel like I don't have nobody, and I very seldom look up, I very seldom glorify God. When I get in that root, what happens? Sin is born. And I start sinning, sinning, right? And not believing in Him, that's a sin from the Word go, right? Not believing in what He has done and who He is, that's a sin. So when we don't believe that He's going to take control and He's going to bring us over to the promised land each and every time, we sin, right? We are saying God can't do it. But I'm here to tell you this morning, God can do it. God has already done it. God is fixed to do it. God, oh, no, God's already done it. Ain't no fixing in there. When we say God is fixing to do something, we tell, we tell ourselves a lie. Because he's already done it. Over 2,000 years ago, he knew you'd be sitting right there where you're at right now. In the shape you in. He knew it. And he gives you a choice each and every day. On which way to go? Are we going to sit here this morning and lick our wounds and talk about how bad off we are? Or are we going to go out and we're going to tell folks about Jesus Christ and put ourselves to rest and rest on Him? Put ourselves to rest and say, I can do nothing without you. I am nothing without you. I can't part a Red Sea without you. I can't get up and walk without you. I can't talk to nobody without you. Oh, that's a big one right there. I can't talk no talk to nobody without you. But so many times we think we can, can't we? Mm. And each and every time we fall out of grace. Because God don't like no sin. God don't like no unbelief. Mm -mm. We have to, just like that baby laying, she's laying down back there now. I guess this long-winded preacher got her laying down. What I'm saying is, she trusts in her mom. She trusts in her mama. She trusts in me. She trusts in her family. She trusts in them. Why? Because we have gained that trust. <coughs> unto her. And she knows it. She knows she's going to get fed. She knows she's going to have a bed to lie in tonight. She knows it. So she has faith. Right? But God has given us the resources in order to make her safe. And as little as she is, I know she knows there is a God. As little as she is, I know she knows there is a God. Because she sees the peace in her life at times, right? And I believe, I believe with all my heart, you were born with the faith of God. 
You were born knowing that there is a God. I believe that long and long. It's instilled in you at birth. We're the ones that changes things. He don't. He gives you what you need when you first open your eyes into this life. And He's going to give you what you need when you close your eyes in this life. And He's going to give He's going to step out just a little foot further. He's going to give you the promised land. He's going to give you heavenly places to walk in. He's going to give you a brand new body. He's going to fix you up. He's going to shine you up. He's going to make you look good. I'm talking about it. Woo! We're going to be able to leap like a bunch of little young running around. Amen. Leap for joy. That's right, I want to see a smile on people's faces this morning and say it, that God is my Savior. And I love Him. I love Him. Amen. Preacher was talking about this morning, I caught a glimpse of it on TV, talking about the God's love. Oh, God's love. How do we, how can we produce, produce, produce love for God? Letting the love from Him flow through us unto others. That's all we have to do. Let the love of God flow through you. And don't let it stop right there. Let it go on out. And don't let it be filtered when you sin. Amen. Don't let it be filtered by old Satan. Don't let it be filtered by thinking about you going to hell one day. Don't let it be filtered that way. Let it let you say, I got a heavenly home and I'm going to be there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. We're going to be there forever. Amen. This little child I'm holding right here knows there is a God. She knows it. She has faith in it. She has faith. Woo. Because she knows without a shadow of a doubt that she's going to be took care of. Just like she run right up here and I picked her up and she was just she said she had enough faith to know that Papa would have picked her up and was able to hold her because she had faith. And right now she's leaning on my everlasting arms through God. Amen. Woo, praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Yeah. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a land on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, oh, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, Morning breaks eternal bright and fair. It's over in the and the road is called up yonder. I'll be there when the road is called up yonder. When the road is called up yonder. When the road is called up yonder. Amen. You feel it this morning. You feel it going down your back this morning. Woo! It's a good feeling, ain't it? Praise God. Yes, it is. Uh. Let's make it to the promised land this morning. Let's say we there. And let's say he's by our side. And there's no other way out. Amen. But by him. Praise God. Baby, would you close us, please? Dear Lord, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for all these little people that come out, Lord, to hear your word and to feel your presence. Lord, I ask you for peace and comfort for them, Lord, and just lay it on their hearts, Lord, that anywhere they are, you are there also. And Lord, I just ask you to, to stay with them and stay with us as we go through this week. And forgive us where we're going to fail you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.
Thank <laughs> you.